The next type of intermolecular force that we'll look at is somewhat unfortunately named. It's called a hydrogen bond. It is not a bond. It is not covalent. It is not ionic. It is not metallic. It is just a special category of intermolecular forces. It's really a kind of beefed up or stronger version of a dipole to dipole. This can only happen with polar molecules with specific elements in them. It occurs when we have a hydrogen atom, our smallest atom with only one electron, bonded directly to a nitrogen and oxygen or a fluorine. Because those are three small atoms with high electronegativities, with very little shielding and a very high ZEF, that H to O, H to N, and H to F bond becomes very polar. The N, O, or F becomes extra negative, and that hydrogen becomes extra positive. In fact, very often, the far side of that hydrogen nucleus is almost bare as the electrons are pulled away, making that partial positive extra large. Well, that partial positive on that hydrogen is going to be strong, more strongly attracted to a neighboring oxygen atom. And it's really not necessarily the lone pair, but the negative dipole on an N, O, or F. They do have to have some lone pairs in order to be able to do this, but it is the negative dipole resulting as a result of the lone pair that is what makes this attraction especially strong. So I have said it, I have typed it. This is still just an IMF. The extra strength is still about 100 times weaker than a covalent bond itself. So we say that they're extra strong, but they're still several times weaker. So this is in many ways considered the strongest of the IMFs or the strongest IMF within a pure substance. Um, but it is not the only kind of IMF that a molecule would exhibit. If it has or can exhibit hydrogen bonding, it has to be polar. So it also has dipole-dipole. It also is a molecule, therefore it has dispersion. So often what sets aside these elements or compounds, excuse me, that have hydrogen to NO or F is that in addition to other types of attractions, they also have a slightly stronger version. To say that they have dipole-dipole and hydrogen bonding is acceptable, but it's really they have dispersion and then their dipole-dipole is the extra strong hydrogen bonds in some cases. In other cases, there's other molecules that also make it polar. But why this kind of got its own name is the importance of it biologically. Within DNA, the much of the structure, I believe the tertiary structure, what's holding our two strands together is hydrogen bonding. It's important that it's not a covalent or ionic bond because that would hold it too tightly, not allowing some of the replication but it is strong enough that it does keep it together. You will very often see DNA as an example of hydrogen bonding. And what we're looking for is not necessarily the nitrogen to hydrogen bond, but the hydrogen bonded on a nitrogen here attracted to the oxygen on another, in this case, I believe it would be a base pair. So this can happen across molecules like that. And we'll see hydrogen bonding and these different forces, if our molecule is large enough, can also make parts of those molecules stick together. But with our examples here below, we're thinking about each additional type of IMF and how that makes the attraction, making the molecules stick together just that little bit more.